It was perhaps the most infamous and legendary outbreak of violence in the history of the American West. A bloody and prolonged conflict that resulted in numerous deaths and the destruction of lives and homes. A battle fought for greed and money. Indeed, of all the range wars that were waged on the American frontier, perhaps none are as infamous nor more examined by historians than the war in Lincoln County, New Mexico. And from this bitter conflict, there emerged one of the most legendary and notorious outlaws in the annals of American history. He was born Henry McCarty. He was known in his time as Kid Antrim, or Billy Bonnie. But history knows him simply as Billy the Kid. Today, the town of Lincoln, New Mexico, stands much as it did in the late 1800s, when it was the scene of a brutal and violent conflict. The town attracts thousands of visitors a year from across America and around the world. They come to Lincoln to relive history, to experience and feel the Western legends that abound on its streets and in its simple adobe buildings. To walk through the town of Lincoln is to travel in time, to go back over 100 years to an era when this small village on the Rio Benito River was the center of war in Lincoln County. Lawrence G. Murphy probably discovered Lincoln County while serving in the United States Army in New Mexico. An Irish immigrant who had served in the Civil War and on the frontier, he was a cunning and ruthless businessman who saw the opportunity to completely dominate the economy of the town and the county. His partner was Emil Fritz, a German immigrant and ex-army colonel whom Murphy had met in the service. Together they ran the lucrative trading post at nearby Fort Stanton for many years before moving their operation to Lincoln. They also had close ties to men such as District Attorneys Thomas Catron and William Reinerson and other members of the infamous and corrupt Santa Fe Ring, which controlled the territorial government. L. G. Murphy, when he exited the United States Army, went into business with some one of his former Army cronies, and that would be Lieutenant Colonel Emil Fritz and both Emil Fritz and Murphy uh, knew one another, of course, from having been commanders of various forts together and, and having campaigned together. And the two of them, uh, knowing how the military procurement system worked and with their inside information as to uh, the needs of the Mescalero uh, Apache in particular, who they had helped supply at the Bosque Redondo, uh, managed to man use the information essentially against the government to their own personal financial gain uh, and became the de facto uh, and sometimes actual Indian agents uh, as well as post traders at uh, Fort Stanton which was the second largest post in, in the territory of New Mexico. Uh, the two of them uh, managed to defraud the government on numerous occasions. I don't think anyone defends their, their business practices and they were eventually thrown off of the post which occasioned uh, Murphy at that point and Fritz to expand their what had then been a branch store in the town of Lincoln uh, into a very, very large operation, which eventually was known as the House in Lincoln and then eventually will become the Lincoln County Courthouse. It was in 1874 that Murphy opened his big store on the western edge of Lincoln. It was the only two-story building in town and certainly its most imposing structure. In addition, given the Army posts and Indian reservations in the area, Murphy knew that if he secured the government contracts to supply these outposts, he would no doubt become the monopolizing economic force in that part of the territory. Although an alcoholic, Murphy was a shrewd man who understood the use of intimidation and violence to attain his goals. Indeed, it was a way of life in the rugged and raw New Mexico territory. Within just a few short years, Murphy did indeed become one of the most powerful men in Lincoln County. To the largely Hispanic population of Lincoln, L.G. Murphy and company became known to all as the house. I don't think he's as bad as he's portrayed quite a bit, especially in the movies, but uh, you know, he was like everybody else out here, he was trying to get rich. And uh, he was doing it the best way he knew how, which was fairly brutal. And uh, you know, he was a former military man, he had lots of connections. and. You know, to, to color him as a villain or a hero, I think, is, you know, inappropriate. Uh, Murphy was just a businessman. I think L.G. Murphy was a very uh, intelligent man. Uh, I think he was very rough. I think he could run probably any corporation in America. 
uh, and he had a drinking problem. And I think that's what did him in. I think he was extremely intelligent. Uh, the partnership, L.G. Murphy and, and uh, Hamel Fritz, what I heard, the family, it, mostly it was L.G. Murphy and Hamel just was a soldier and knew what was going on and fed the information or kept, kept it going and then they got a business going. And, and I don't think the family thought that Hamel did much business at the, at the store. L.G. Murphy uh, is uh, reported to have been the, the convivial member of the partnership, apparently the aggressive member of the partnership, uh, was Fritz, uh, kind of fitting uh, probably his Germanic nature. Uh, Murphy, the Irishman, uh, was more convivial, uh, was, uh, played the, the, the soft member of the group, the jovial member of the group, to uh, you know, the more standoffish uh, Germanic Fritz. Uh, the two of them together, however, were a, a, an almost unstoppable uh, business combination. I think the fact that they were Army veterans made them know how it operated and gave them an insight of how to secure contracts and make it work. Well, anyone who stands up and tells a political convention that they might as well try and hold back the waves of the sea with a fork as opposed to them, I would classify as fairly ruthless. Murphy's clerk and protege, and the man who would eventually take over the company, was James J. Dolan, an ex-soldier like Murphy. Dolan took charge of the firm in 1877 at age 29 and changed its name to J.J. Dolan and Company. His partner was another ex-army man named John Riley. I've always had personally a soft spot for Jimmy Dolan simply because he didn't seem capable of ever telling the truth. Uh, and I think he was definitely more ruthless and certainly more prone to violence than uh, Murphy would have been. He was a, a good man as far as a family's concerned. He, he did things nice. He, you know, he was respected as a uh, county commissioner and I guess a sheriff for a little while or something like this. Uh, he, I think, you know, the family would even say that he would fight too quick. <laughs> he would uh, jump at conclusions pretty fast and that, that he probably carried things too far, even for their judgment. Dolan was an intelligent individual, good businessman. Uh, I don't, th I, he didn't, ha I think at one point he just did to have control. After all, you're dealing with people uh, in this story who acted on their own in some cases, uh, instances, and what are you going to do? I mean, I don't think it was Dolan's intention to have anybody murdered, killed, cold-blooded style, um, but that's the way it happened. And once it happens, now you're backtracking. Dolan was uh, uh, Murphy's protege, and, and I think he learned everything from him, and I think that uh, Murphy knew how to play rough, and Dolan had a bad temper, and I think that's exactly what he did, was he, he played all the way to the wall. I always react negative uh, to Jimmy Dolan. I've tried to put myself in these men's shoes and tried to find their good points, something that I could associate with, and Dolan is one that I just cannot like. Um, he comes off as a, a short man. He's five foot two, or at most five foot four. Irish and very hot-headed and very young and very much out to get his own way and he's he is the ruthless one. From Murphy, his mentor, Dolan learned well the devious methods necessary to get ahead and stay ahead on the American frontier. Indeed, like Murphy, James Dolan would stop at nothing to maintain his position of power in Lincoln County. I think Jimmy Dolan was probably led by uh, Murphy into some of the things that he did and then when he learned the game quite well, he didn't need Murphy, and he took it on himself and even maybe became more ruthless. I think Jimmy Dolan learned a, a lot from Murphy, and uh, he was younger, and I believe that he became more vicious and more aggressive.